My name is uh, Pastor Ray Minicon. Um, I'm uh, from the Cubby Cubby people in southeast Queensland on my father's side, and the uh, Gurang Gurang people on my mother's side, which is around the Bundaberg area. One of the other books of the Bible that helps me to reflect upon the, the pain and the struggle of this is really a little mini Bible in the book of Job. Because Job starts with uh, a similar kind of story where uh, uh, God and the devil comes together and, and he says to Job, look, have you seen anyone so righteous as my servant Job? And uh, Job tests God and says, well, if you took everything away from him, he's going to curse you. And uh, what we find in the first passage of or the first uh, chapter or the first two chapters of Job is, you know, everything's been taken from him. He's lost his uh, family, he's lost all of his possessions, he's lost um, um, everything that he depended upon in terms of his livelihood. It's a bit like our story here in, our, in, in Australia. Everything has been destroyed. And the last picture you see of Job is that he's sitting in the burnt out ashes of his uh, ranch house and he's scratching his sores with a bit of uh, cow manure. Now that's us. That's where we've come to as Aboriginal people. We've been so decimated and so um, abused and brutalised that it's uh, very difficult for us to, to, to you know, find a way forward. And then you get his, uh, Job's comforters coming around and they're, they're all, they've all got their theories on, on all of this. And uh, we've got so many theories about us that it's, you know, and a lot of the th theories started with uh, Darwin theories. Yeah, yeah, Darwinistic theories predominated and dominated how people saw us because uh, many of the uh, false claims about us came from that particular philosophy. Uh, one of the uh, Aboriginal, one of the uh, <coughs> priests here, uh, one of the priests who came to these, these shores here uh, said this about my people. He says, look, you know, the Aboriginal peoples are the most degraded of the human race. Time has not yet arrived for them to receive the great blessings of civilization and the knowledge of Christianity. Now, uh, his name was Samuel Marston, Reverend Samuel Marston. He went over to New Zealand and helped them formulate a treaty. <laughs> but that was his perception of us, came from this Darwinistic theory. And there was also another politician in uh, the 1900s there when they were talking about setting up a federal uh, government here, who said that uh, there is no scientific evidence that the Aborigine is a human being at all. So you had the political sides of it as well as the religious sides of us uh, having these perceptions about us that didn't fit into their worldview. And so we were condemned. <laughs> they practiced or they played God on us. <laughs> and they tried to take us back into Genesis 3, and kick us out of the flaming garden, our own garden really. And so when you see the story of Job in that particular way, when these uh, uh, philosophers came around and tried to encourage him to say, well, he must have done something wrong to deserve all of this, at the end of it, our creator himself comes along. And uh, he has this question to Job, in spite of all the pain that he's gone through and all the troubles and all the trials and all the tribulations and all the philosophies that came around to try to help him to see his own mistakes or whatever, the Lord says, well, Job, I've got a few questions for you too. <laughs> and the question he asked was, you know, were you there when I created everything? That Beretit Elohim. In the beginning. And to me it was, it, it was an invitation, and it still is an invitation for all peoples to go back to the beginning. That's why I don't have much of a difficulty with, with what we would call creation science or science around these kind of issues because this investigation back into the beginning takes us back into what he has already put in place. And so uh, uh, 
that's the ways in which um, our Creator spoke to Job. And I believe he has this powerful message for us, this invitation to come back, not into Genesis 3, but back into Genesis 1. In the beginning, bear a sheet out of him. <laughs> and rethink and re-see things through our Creator's eyes. Not our theories, but through his eyes. Um, and that's when you can see in terms of the message that uh, Jesus came to restore, it's not just to save me from my own personal sins, which is so minute in the biggest, in the biggest you know, s scope of things or the bigger perception of things. He died to save the whole universe. So salvation to me is how do we then not just save ourselves, <laughs> but save the blooming planet that we live in, his creation. And we can only do that if we take this invitation that he gave to Job and that he's giving to us, and let's go back to the beginning. That's the starting point. If we can get back there, we might be able to uh, save our little home, our little planet here, our land and our mother.